the UFC's return to Australia is in the books. And what a show it was, with one of the best crowds we are going to see all year, a historic main event and some excellent main card and prelim performances, UFC 284 was a hell of a show. But what made this show so spectacular? Let's not waste any time and let's find out. This is the fight franchise and the recap and review of UFC 284. The early prelims featured four fights, with three of the four fights going to decision and only one finish. Short notice Elvis Brenner beat the heavy favourite Zubaira Tukagov with a unanimous decision victory. Blake Builder in a back and forth fight won a decision against the ultra competitive Shane Young to take his record to 8-1. Jack Jenkins on his UFC debut got a unanimous decision victory where he was able to defeat Don Shainis, dominating most of the fight whether on the ground or on the feet. Loma Lukbumi got the only finish on the early prelims, defeating Elise Reed getting her to the ground early in round 2 after a competitive round 1. She would take the back of Reed and cinch up a brilliant rear naked choke. This was brilliant for Lukbum, who is now on a 3 fight win streak with that victory. That was also special for her as it was her first win in the UFC via finish. The prelims had some real fun fights and standout performances. Jamie Malarkey put on a dominant display against Francisco Pradal, whether on the feet or on the ground. This was brilliant for Malarkey as he showed he has grown and improved since his brutal loss from Jalen Turner. After the fight Malarkey did shoot his shot and asked for Paddy the Baddy. Let's see if he gets that fight. Clayton Rodriguez put on an excellent performance in which he blitzed Shannon Ross in the first minute of the fight, overwhelming him with brutal and wild striking, landing brilliant spinning attacks with beautiful shots to the body, dropping and stopping Shannon Ross with the ref jumping in. This was a brilliant win for the Brazilian which gives him great momentum going into his next fight. Josh Koulibao secured a brilliant win in a wild fight which saw him suffer from a brutal low blow. After a back and forth first round, Koulibao was able to drop Bagda Sarayan with a jab and jumping on the neck, transitioning to the back and securing the rear naked choke to send the hometown crowd wild. This was a brilliant way to secure a victory in his hometown and his second UFC fight. In what was predicted to be a back and forth war, Tyson Pedro vs Modestas Bukasas ended up being a cagey affair, with Bukaskas getting the better of the judges scorecards. That brought the end to a largely lacklustre prelims, compared to the last UFC pay per view in Brazil which had amazing prelims with standout performances all around, it was unfortunate with fights falling through and just underwhelming fights and performances. The prelims were just unable to deliver, however, the main card is where this pay per view shines, with one of the most fun and the best pay per view main cards in recent years. But before we get into the main card, the UFC announced the next Hall of Famer to go alongside Jose Aldo in the 2023 Hall of Fame. Lil Leval Jens Pulver is going into the UFC Hall of Fame, a well deserved spot for the first ever lightweight champ. To be a legend in the early days of the sport and be a pioneer of the lower weight classes, all while being the first champ of arguably now the best and most talent stacked division in the UFC. This was fantastic. To see his reaction also on stream and what it meant to him, to see his hard work recognised was also brilliant. Jens Pulver is a legend of the fight game and has earned a well deserved spot in the UFC Hall of Fame. Jimmy Crute and Alonzo Menafield fought in a back and forth war, with Menafield dominating on the feet with huge punches forcing Crute to grapple. In terms of the first round, Jimmy Crute dominated the early parts of the round with Menafield ending up on top and dominating Crute on the ground. The second round, Menafield would piece up Crute on the feet and dominate the start of the round, however Crute would finish the fight stronger, trying to secure the submission win. The third round seemed like it was all to play for, with Crute trying to secure the takedown and Menafield stopping him grabbing the fence. This caused a one point deduction for Menafield and Crute dominated the final round on the ground. The fight finished a majority draw, which honestly seems a fair result and we need to see these two run it back sometime soon. Justin Taffer took on Parker Porter, with Justin Taffer channeling his inner Mark Hunt. The fight was fought on the feet back and forth for just over one minute, with both guys being tactical with their distance management until Parker Porter rushed in and got caught by a brilliant left hand which dropped Porter with the ref jumping in, with Taffer securing the walk off KO. That's two first round KOs for Taffer now, and let's hope we get some more brilliant KOs from the bad man. Next up, definitely a highlight of the night and what will be one of the moments of the year. Hometown hero from Perth, Jack Della Maddalena took on Randy Brown, with the crowd extra vocal for this fight, showing love for their guy and booing Randy Brown. The fight started and Randy Brown looked great, using his range and distance to brilliant effect, with myself and many people wondering how would Jack be able to get on the inside and be able to use his brilliant boxing, with Randy using his reach to brilliant effect. Jack would use brilliant footwork to cut off the octagon and back Randy Brown against the fence landing two brilliant right hands to drop him, which sent the crowd wild. Madalena would get on the back of Randy Brown after some great ground and pound and secured the rear naked choke. What a win and what a performance in front of his hometown crowd. The Jack Della Madalena Express keeps on going. 
Next up, the performance of the night. Yaya Rodriguez fought excellently to defeat rival Josh Emmett in a fantastic two round fight. The fight began cagey until Yaya used his distance management and elusiveness to come in and out to land some vicious striking, none more than his kicks to the body, which visibly hurt Emmett on multiple occasions. Emmett did have his own success landing some brutal punches, which hurt Yaya, but the Mexican was too fast and vicious with his varied attacks, which was too much for Emmett on the feet. Yaya would throw a flying knee, which Emmett caught and took the fight to the ground. With Emmett on top and Yair landing vicious elbows and up kicks from the bottom, this led him to secure the triangle and finishing Emmett in the second round of a really fun fight. The crowd and fans were spoiled with how much fun this fight was. Yair looked the best he has ever been in his career and secured a legendary moment in front of his family on an amazing co-main event spot in one of the biggest fights in UFC history. The main event was a wonderful spectacle, which saw the two best fighters on the planet go head to head, which is one of the first times we have seen such a thing in MMA. Alex Volkanovsky went up a weight class to challenge Islam Makhachev for £155 gold to become one of the few double champs in MMA. Many fans and pundits predicted Makhachev's grappling to be too much for the smaller Volkanovsky and Alex Volkanovsky to be too much to handle in the striking department for Islam Makhachev. This set the backdrop for one of the greatest technical MMA fights in history. This fight saw Alex Volkanovsky overachieve in the grappling department and Islam Makhachev in the striking department, which was a shock to the MMA world. The fight would be back and forth with Volkanovsky landing heavy shots and Islam catching him with beautiful counters on the way in. Islam early landed a takedown and dominated almost securing a rear naked choke with Volkanovsky expertly defending the choke. As the fight went on, Islam's grappling and wrestling became less effective as he began to tire, with Volkanovsky showing brilliant defense and getting the better of some scrambles. Islam did have success on the feet, stumbling Volkanovsky on multiple occasions and dropping him to one knee. Islam in the fourth round secured another takedown and secured a dominant position on the ground, trying to secure another rear naked choke. However, Volkanovsky showed brilliant defense again. The final round was back and forth to the bitter end, with Volkanovsky at the end of the fight stuffing a takedown and ending the fight on top in Islam's guard, landing brilliant ground and pound. This fight would go to the judges' scorecard, with Islam winning on the scorecards in a close fight, which many fans are debating either way. Regardless of the outcome, this fight saw both guys' stock rise, with a brilliant crowd which was brilliant all night, but especially in the main event, elevated this fight to another level. Many fans are saying it's already a lock for fight of the year. For the casuals, they might not agree, but for the MMA purists, this was one of the most entertaining fights of all time. It was the highest level of MMA we have seen in years, from two guys at the peak of their powers. I'm not even going to debate the decision and who won. As for Volkanovski, it didn't even feel like a loss. He made the most dominant lightweight since Khabib look human, which no one thought was possible. Let's just hope the MMA gods bless us with a rematch of this fight, as it's a fight a lot of us would love to see again. Especially if Volkanovski had more time to adjust to the weight class and as for Makhachev, what a first defense and to start your title reign with, to get a win versus the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Overall, this card was amazing. The crowd was absolutely electric all night and the Australian fans deserve a pat on the back for how much they added to the fights and especially the main event. They deserve another huge pay-per-view just for the atmosphere and hype they brought all week. As for the whole card, yeah, the prelims leave more to be desired, but the main card delivered on nearly every level. Plus, many of us expected the main event to be a boring grapple-heavy contest. However, we got the complete opposite. For that reason, if I was going to grade the card, it gets an A-. Amazing crowd, a brilliant main card and some decent fights on the prelims, it's going to be a difficult task to top this card next. Luckily for the UFC, the GOAT is about to make his long awaited return. Did you enjoy the video? Let us know down in the comments below. What did you think of UFC 284 and how would you grade it and who do you think won the main event? Put that down in the comments below. Leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe for more fight content coming soon. If you enjoy football content, check out the football franchise for football content on there. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you in the next one.